cold. It was really cold. The run became heavier that afternoon, accompanied by a rolling thunder now and then. The skies had turned dark, though I couldn't see any of it under the black umbrella. Not that I was looking up. In fact, looking up was the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. I stared at the grass beneath my feet, unable to look up at the people weeping around me. All I could see was the damp grass underneath my feet. Only the monotone elegies that floated from my ears reminded me that I was at funeral. I it was only when the speeches ended that I finally was able to raise my head. A small gathering of people, mostly made of relatives that I didn't even know were related to me, were huddled around a simple small grave. For a while, all I heard was the sound of raindrops on umbrellas. If it were raining, Everything would probably be in a heavy silence. I looked beside me, where my father was standing and holding up a large black umbrella for a small family of three. His face was emotionless, a strange sigh next to my weeping mother. I wondered what was going through his mind. After all, each into the smooth grey thompson before us was his father's name. My grandfather, the one who raised me like his own daughter, had passed away that day. The ceremony was small, only close family were allowed to come. Slowly though, people began to leave, leaving my father, mother and me behind at the grave. A man dressed in a clean black suit under the uniform black umbrella of the funeral attenders looked towards us, introducing himself as grandfather's lawyer. He pulled out a few documents from his suitcase and began to read aloud its contents. And now, I shall read Harold Anderson's last will and testament. Only my parents and I were allowed to be present for my grandfather's will. It was under the strict request of his lawyer, and there was a reason why. And to my dearest granddaughter, I give my estate. All the furniture and decor that resides within the house shall also be given to my granddaughter. What? I couldn't believe my ears. I had earned a family estate? At 18? That was impossible, and yet it was written by my own grandfather's hand. He passed the family estate to her? Why am I not surprised? Dear. Well, did he say anything about what will become of the CEO and chairman position of the Anderson Toys Company? No. It is presumed that the vice chairman will succeed the position. <laughs> Even to the bitter end, he wouldn't give in. What a stubborn old man. Shaking his head, my father turned to face my mother with a serious expression on his face. About the estate. Should we send her there to get used to the building? It'll be a good place for her to live after high school. Are you sure we should? Why not? This would be a good experience for her. Honey, what do you think? I really wasn't sure what to say. Why did my grandfather think that I was the upper prey here to the mansion? Was I even ready to live on my own? Well, that seems to be it. We'll be taking our leave now. I'm sure the little heiress needs some time to adjust. David! Even though she raised her voice, my dad wordlessly began walking back to the car, disinterested. Don't mind him, honey. I think that your grandfather's passing really affected him. Why don't we get back home for now? You can go on ahead with the car, ma'am. I think I need some time alone with Grandpa. Oh, of course. Take all the time you need. She gave me a quick hug and hurried after my dad. I looked around the funeral grounds, which was completely empty save for the sullen looking grave that was laid in front of me. I'm sure that if Grandma were in charge of arranging all of this, it would have been much different. It was blatantly obvious that my dad was in charge of the whole event. Parents would bury their own family the same day they passed away. Everyone knew my grandfather's love for toys, and yet the grave was mere stone slab on the ground 
void of any children's toys. My dad didn't even bother putting flowers. His disdain for my grandfather was almost pitiful. Sorry, grandpa. I tried to force out some words, but the only thing that came out was a choked sob. You told me to stay strong. And right now, I'm the farthest from it. Like, that one time, a long time ago. Grandpa. Oh, it's so good to see you again, sweetie. I was swabbing the giant bear hug, and we both laughed as he sang me around like an airplane. It was one of my favorite things about seeing my grandfather, the way he greeted me. And like my father, my grandfather was loving and playful, even as I grew older. Sorry that daddy couldn't be here today. He said that he wasn't feeling too good again. It had always been like that that missed every visit to grandpa's house, citing that he was busy with work or wasn't feeling well. Is that so? Well, that's okay. Daddy can come around next time, and you're here, right? Mm, yeah, so what are we doing today, grandpa? Mommy says that there's a new desert cafe open in town. Maybe we could go. Oh, I would love to, but I've been so busy with the company these days. We're actually working on a little something. Would you like to see? Yes! Oh, is that a toy? It is. I was designing a new line of them, but I feel like something's missing. You don't think you could help me out, could you? Of course! He placed a toy in my hands with a smile, and I inspected it carefully. It was beautifully crafted and obviously a lot of work was put into it. There was one thing though. So, what do you think? Hmm, I think the heart on its chest should light up when you hug it. It will like it's alive, and it can be like a little nightlight before you sleep. He stroked his chin, considering my input while nodding his head. After a few moments of silent deliberation, he turned to me with a chuckle. That's a great idea. I'll get to changing it right away. You're always like my little lucky charm, dear. You always know what to add to make the perfect toy. <laughs> wow, I hope I can be like you one day, Grandpa. You want to make toys as well? Well, making people happy is the best feeling in the world. I do not want to make toys when I grow up, though. Don't worry too much about it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. That makes sense. Daddy doesn't think of it in the same way, though. Your father. I'm sure he just wants the best for you. I'm not so sure about that. Sweetie, look at me. He bent down to look at my eye level with a serious look on his face. As much as your father may say something that doesn't make sense now, you must remember that he's always thinking about you. He loves you. There's no doubt about that. And you need to love him just as equally. I don't hate daddy. I really do love him. I don't know why he's like this, though. Your father and I have had some difficulties with each other in the past. But it's nothing that you should be concerned about. I had heard tidbits of this from my mother and various other people. The only people who had stayed quiet were my father and grandfather. Both of them refrained from saying a word on the subject matter, but it was clear that whatever happened set up a wall between them. It's hard though, trying to pretend as if nothing were wrong. However, no matter what, you have to stay strong. You're a big girl already, and, well, there'll come a day when it seems like it's you against the world. But always remember that your family and friends will be here with you. Daddy, Mommy your friends at school. Me. We'll stand together to get through it. How can you be so sure of that? Because we'll be right here and here. He pointed his finger to my head first and then pointed at my chest. So stay strong, promise? For a moment he looked almost sad, bleeding, but as quickly as it had come the expression disappeared from his face and he was all smiles once again. Promise. Upon hearing that, Crumble let out a great burst of laughter and stood up. Alright then, enough of that. 
How about I whip up some special homemade dessert? I know I can't accompany you at that new cafe, but we sure can talk and eat while I cook and do some paperwork. Homemade dessert? I'll race you to the kitchen. Hey, slow down there. I'm not what I used to be. <laughs> you will be the very home I love to see you in. Why? Why would you think I would be ready to take it? Especially after this? A surge of anger bubbled within me, but I quickly saw that there was no use in getting mad, especially when the person in question was no longer there. I'm sorry. It's hard to stay calm when you left me with so many questions. Especially about what happened between you and Dad. <laughs> what am I doing? Talking to a grave? My vision blurred and I suddenly realized that I was crying. My face heated up as tears rolled down my cheeks. I'll bring you some flowers later. I... I miss you, Grandpa. I'll try my best to fulfill my promise I gave to you. Even if the world might be turned against me. I left the grave wiping my tears hastily so my parents wouldn't see. <laughs> 